AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. Germany gets mad at and threatens General Motors. Toyota issues a big recall in China due to a quality defect. E-fuel starts selling still so you can make ethanol in your garage. And our feature story looks at how Honda is being forced to change its strategic plans. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Monday, August 24th, 2009, and now the news. Germany's getting pretty impatient with General Motors because it still hasn't decided whether to pick Magna or investment firm RHJ to buy part of Opel. Now, German Chancellor Angela Merkel is weighing in on the issue. The Wall Street Journal reports she's telling GM to act soon. The head of the state of Hesse, where Opel is located, says there's no justification for a postponement And Reuters quotes the head of the Opel Union of threatening, and I quote, spectacular measures if GM doesn't decide soon. But the GM board does not like the deal the German government cooked up with Magna. The Wall Street Journal reports that Jim Press, the co-CEO of Chrysler, will leave the company in November. Press spent 37 years at Toyota, where he rose to the highest position of any non-Japanese executive even being elected to the company's board of directors. He shot the industry when he left Toyota to join Chrysler, then owned by Cerberus, presumably for a ton of money. Earlier this year, he begged Chrysler dealers to buy vehicles from the factory to save the company. Many of those dealers felt betrayed when Chrysler announced it was getting rid of 789 of them. And now with press leaving, there's no doubt that Fiat CEO Sergio Marchionne is the only one who's truly running Chrysler. Chinese company Teng Zhang is one step closer to buying Hummer. Reuters says opposition to the deal from the Chinese government has died down, and a deal is only weeks away. It's been rumored that Teng Zhang will purchase Hummer for about $200 million. And speaking of China, Toyota's recalling nearly 700,000 vehicles there due to a defect with power windows. According to the AFP, Toyota is recalling the Camry, Yaris, Corolla, and Vios due to excessive lubricant used in the electronic controls that may interfere with the opening and closing of the windows or cause short circuits. Maserati is unveiling a new model at next month's Frankfurt Motor Show. The Gran Cabrio is a Pininfarina-style cloth-top convertible and the brand's first four-seat cabrio. The company says the car is designed for men and women that love to live life in an understated but sophisticated manner, whatever that means. Behind the Trident emblem, it features a 4.7 liter V8 engine with 323 kilowatts of power. That is about 433 horsepower. Look for the Grand Cabrio to go on sale next spring. The LA Times reports that a company called eFuel is developing a home system that allows you to turn organic waste into fuel. The $10,000 microfueler is designed to convert stuff like grass clippings, cardboard, and even beer into cellulosic ethanol. The plan is to have tanker trucks pick up waste from breweries and food processors and drop it off at home stations. Owners are charged $2 a gallon as they pump the distilled fuel. With a special permit, it's legal to distill up to 10,000 gallons of ethanol for fuel every year as long as you do it on your own property and do not sell it to others. Coming up next, we'll take a look at how Honda has been forced to change its strategic plans for alternative cars. We'll be back right after this. Changing tires out here could be dangerous, but with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. Honda is a company that marches to the beat of a different drummer. It likes to do things its way no matter what the experts think. For example, it has stuck with front-wheel drive models for its Acura brand, despite the fact that the luxury segment is dominated by rear-drive cars. And it has never gone with V8 engines for Acura, even though the luxury segment is dominated by V8s. But every now and then, Honda has to backtrack on its plans. You know, about 15 years ago, I had dinner in Tokyo with Hiroyuki Yoshino, 
then president of Honda, who told me Honda would never build a diesel engine. But then, when diesels became so popular in Europe that you almost could not sell cars without one, Honda came out with a terrific diesel. More recently, Honda said it would not build electric cars because so many developing countries in the world, notably China and India, use coal to make electricity. And since those coal plants have next to no emission controls, Honda argued that electric cars would actually make emissions worse, not better. But now reports out of Japan say Honda will show an EV at the Tokyo Auto Show this fall. And its opposition to EVs could leave it lagging behind everyone else. The Associated Press says Honda's EV will not show up until the first half of the next decade. And all this calls into question all the effort Honda has been pouring into hydrogen fuel cells. While they could emerge as the cleanest cars out there, there simply isn't the infrastructure to distribute hydrogen for the transportation sector. So this is another example of how Honda is going to have to change its strategic plans. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.